Oh my goodness. No, keep it going. It's the finale, y'all. Hola. What's up, Roscoe? Hi, 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 oh hi. Oh my hi. God. Are we ready to get this shindig started? Yes! Yes, we're so excited. How are you, Karima? Are you good? Doing lovely. I'm excited for the finale. Yes. You look stunning. Thank you. So do you. But before we kick things off, we want yes. to say Batty couldn't be here with us today. She got in another injury on a scooter, so she'll be back in a little so, bit. Listen, it go to her. No joke, seriously. Uh, she's like in a hospital bed right now. So go show her some love. Go to her Instagram. Yeah, she, she broke her leg. Her leg is completely snapped in half. Yeah. She had to have surgery. This is like a real thing. So whoever was laughing out there, mm -hmm, now you feel bad. Um, <laughs> but it is a thing. So uh, please go show her some love on her Instagram and her Tic Tac and all that. Uh, Tic Tac. We're, we're having so, tic tacs later. I'm so, I'm That's so what it old. Is. Uh, and on the talk, go over there and show her some love because she really needs it right now. Well um, we love you. Let's yes, go we ahead. Love you, Daddy. And they're both. Oh, gorgeous. Okay. So, uh, ladies and gentlemen, please welcome our guest today. Give it up for Mohar. Yes. 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 Yeah. yes gorgeous. Welcome. <laughs> and joining us all the way from up the street, give it up for Denali. Yes. Have a seat, have a seat. All right, how are you ladies? How are you ladies doing today? Doing good. Yeah. You checking yourself. Make sure you're yeah. all good in the camera. YouTube. Hi, YouTube. By the way, if you haven't pushed hey. subscribe, please go ahead and subscribe. Uh, how are you doing, Denali? I'm so good. How are you, Nisha? Hey, Chicago. What's good? Yes. So, really quick before we start, have you guys been watching the season and enjoying or not so much? Oh, no. no. <laughs> <laughs> I've been booked. Words. <laughs> no, oh, I've been watching. Out. I watch it like the way the, when it comes out Friday, you watch it Saturday. Yeah. Or if I'm up Or if it comes day. out Thursday and comes out Friday, you watch it Friday. Is that what it is? I just watch it the day after. Oh, the day after. Okay. So you yeah. watch Yeah, Friday. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I bootleg it, or maybe yeah. I don't. <laughs> It's on Paramount. I just like wait that. till everyone spoils it on Twitter. I just like <laughs> wake up in the morning and I'm like, ooh, that clip was cute and that clip was cute. That's all I needed to see. Good work. Well, we're going to try not to spoil anything for our audience members. Yes, yeah, so we're not going to do that. And then really quick, something that I wanted to address uh, really f fast since we finished and these are our last two guests. Yes. We had everyone from this season, from All Stars 8, that wanted to be here. Every, hold on, every single person did get invited from this season. You can look at my manager right over there. Did we invite every person from this season? Now, if the person declined, that was entirely up to them. Uh, can I be messy? Can I be messy? Who? Yes. Be <laughs> <laughs> who? Okay, no, wait. I'll, and, and, I, and I'll, say, I'll say this. I'll say this. As a person who's Sharon. been eliminated first on a season, for me to go do a viewing party and talk about the shit that I did not get to do does not sound fun for me. So possibly maybe the reason why Monica did not want to be here possibly it, or, and, and schedule and then James we invited James right James said she was doing no viewing parties none so oh, it wasn't no, ours no. it's not because she's feuding with me so we are all good girl it's just she chose not to do any viewing parties and I'm super excited that we got what, 90% of the cast. Yeah, we did I'm really so good. I'm so excited for that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But we get to see 100% of the cast on this final episode. So if y'all ready to get this shit this started, let's do it! Yes, okay. That's what it was. 100%. We're gonna, we're gonna go back to the beginning, but before we do, <laughs> Bo and I were just talking about something that happens in pageantry all the time. And what... I feel like sometimes when, when, the, when the organizers of the pageant can't come up with a question and they're like, what the fuck are we asking these girls this time? You say, why should you be the next whatever, blah, 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 blah. That's because they couldn't come up with something, right? right? 
And I promise you that, like, out of the five, maybe three of them will always talk about every adversity or whatever the fuck they went through to get there, not realizing that I went through my own shit, she went through her own shit, she went through her own shit, and not everyone is the same. And every girl that gives their answer never wins. wins. <laughs> Have you never, win? never, never. I, I went through hell, wins. and they're like, zero. <laughs> Pageantry shady. <laughs> okay, let's go to the beginning, though. Let's go to the beginning of, of the episode. Um, the fame game, talent show, extravaganza just finished. Um, how did you guys feel about it being at the end versus the beginning and everyone coming back? Did you guys like that little twist to it? <laughs> I'm going to take that as a no. <laughs> I think it's a really nice introduction you know, when you like haven't seen girls for a while, a talent show really does kind of like encompass your brand and your talent. Set a tone. Yeah, sets a tone. So like, I like it at the beginning. I guess it's fine at the end, but I, I guess I preferred it at the beginning. I don't know. I don't know. I think the talent show at the end was better than the talent show at the beginning. Now, I just yeah. felt like they. I don't know, Kasha Davis, she turned it for me. Then she turned it, it was hysterical. I said, oh, bitch, I voted, okay, that part. <laughs> uh, but yeah, like I felt like La La Ree's talent this time around compared to the first was just like, this is that girl, you know what I mean? So I don't know. Well, now I know they needed something for y'all to do for the Fame Games, but I, I personally would have liked it at the beginning still, and then had y'all lip sync battle for the multipliers on your votes. That would have been sickening. Lovely. Smart, a lip sync smart, battle smart. between everyone? For the eliminated contestants. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Well, let me ask you this since you brought it up. How do you guys feel about the vote multiplying jig thing Girl. that came so up? So, Bussy Queen said. <laughs> uh, <laughs> okay. not, not just you who must not be named. <laughs> no, uh, yeah, what did you guys think about it? Oh, it's okay. No, it's fine. Right? I don't know. Who cares? Okay. Um, <laughs> I, mm, I kind of feel the way about it. I feel like. One half of me, like the whole fame games and the thing, I feel like it's cute because you work so hard to get there and you get to show off this work. You know, these designers work wonderful, wonderful, wonderful. In the words of Pheromone, like you just paid for Instagram photos. So it's great that you get to show it on the main stage, right? Um, I think the fact that you have a talent show that once again gives you a resurgence to make money, because there's so much money out here to make, so I think like if you did go home early, them seeing your face, hey, let's book her for this, let's get her for that commercial, this, that, and the third. So I think there is some validity to it. I just think the way that they were doing the whole bullshit was bullshit. Listen, if you're gonna market the fame games as this runway package, and then at the end be like, JK, here's a bunch of gold stars from Mario Party, you know what I'm saying? It's very, it's very all stars. What was it? The the the. It's very the um, winter season where at the end they were just like, here's a bunch of stars randomly so that we can decide what we want. Yeah, and then they like claim that it's like you guys make the decision when it's like nah, right. they're not making the yeah. decision. Yeah, you know, and <laughs> this is the last time I get to express my opinion, being that I was there. I promise next season I won't do this anymore. <laughs> but I'm speaking from experience. There, it was like, so you mean you can slay this, but someone can spin this wheel, and no matter what happens, this person is going to win. Yeah. It does not matter. I thought it was a disrespect to people who vote. I thought it was a disrespect to all the contestants. And to me, it just said rigor mortis boots. That's, that, that's what it's... My personal opinion, uh, being there is what, that, that's how I felt, you know, being there. Um, as far as the fame games, and this is for every, every single person that has gone onto our YouTube and uh, has called me bitter, uh, talked shit about my rants, and went everything, I'm gonna tell you this right now. The second that I got eliminated, I fought for every single one of those girls. Do you know that every single one of those girls was not going to get paid? They were going to make you do the runways and not pay them. And I said, absolutely motherfucking not. This is bitch. not gonna happen. Because, because, not only did these contestants, not only did everyone in this competition spend their hard work, earned money, 
you had designers that spent so much fucking time making this shit. And guess what? These, these girls weren't even going to get paid for it, but they were out all the coin. What I call it is exploitation. You're exploiting these girls for their looks because people that have been eliminated in previous seasons, they have better runways than the ones still on the seasons. So they figured out a way how to do it without paying the girls. And I put my foot down and said, this is not going to happen. And guess what? Every girl got a fucking paycheck. Yeah. So it's not, listen, it's not bitterness. It's not bitter. But closed mouths don't get fed. And they're going to call me difficult. They're going to call me difficult. And that'll Because you're a woman of but, color. But I'll tell you, that, well, yeah. And they'll call me difficult. But you know what I am? I'm not easy to take advantage of. That's what it is. That's the difference. You're not going to take advantage of me. And I didn't let it happen. And I promise you, when I bump into Monica and Monica's like, Girl, is it is it true you got us a check? Like I'm getting coin for the app, some motherfucking loot that you're getting a check, bitch. It, Put it's some not respect fair. on her it's damn name. Bad. Put some respect on nation's name. You know what that is? Continental. It surely <laughs> is. It surely is. Well, it's speaking true. of getting a check, Jimbo or Candy are about to get two hundred thousand dollars here in just a little bit. Um, Mo and Denali, are you excited for our top two? Are you proud of them? What are your thoughts on them? Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> Who are you rooting for more? Who are you rooting for more? <laughs> I just want to know why they brought an international bitch to an American season. That's my only question. Yeah, I think they were trying it with... Only because, you know, Canada what? was before this one. Uh-huh. Right. Just saying, just saying, you know, she got chopped on my last one. And right. then she, whoo, here. <laughs> and then that same winning talent that she did, whoo, got her certified in the top. Just... <sighs> you know, just, I don't know. But hey, I will say this. If you are going, she didn't hop across the pond. I guess she just went across state line. Yeah. Um, <laughs> bitch, she did it right. The coin she spent, okay? And she oh, went yeah. to Diego Montoya. So, you know, he charges the girls dough. I, I, Six was... racks starting, okay? <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. Six racks starting, okay? <laughs> That's the base. Yeah, and this is true. someone that could make her own shit, and I'm like, did you make this? No, nope. I spent seven grand on this. Oh, work. Okay. I feel the earth move. Yeah. <laughs> oh, <my God. laughs> that's the thing, though. If you are somebody that's getting casted on that show, and you realize that you're like the first of a certain season or a certain series, you are probably gonna be favored a bit. Like, you know what I'm saying? Drag Race loves to do. For the first time ever, right? Yeah. So even entering it, you're probably like, especially if it's your third time, you're like, all right, let me just spend everything that I've got because they're obviously probably a little on my side too, you know what I'm saying? I mean, I did. <laughs> right, right, right. And then they crowned the British bitch. I said, okay, well, it is a British network show. Okay. OT. That's OT. Fine. <laughs> That's fine. Yeah, yeah. But, Mo, your influence on there. You did that light runway, and oh. then what happened on All Winners? Word. Yes, a light runway. Thank you. Oh, that was give it up for Mo Hart, y'all. Thank you. That was made a by Joshua. Was everything. Make some noise. Joshua made that Chicago Josh native. Joshua Ponte. He's amazing. Side note, can we go back to you fighting for the girls? There was another Chicago queen that fought for another round of girls to get a paycheck, too. Oh, so I'll say it. I will say something it with in no the problem. water in Chicago. I'll say it there with really no problem, is. You yes. know, something we're, in the water. We're not, I, think, I, don't think, I think we are not afraid to fight for the girls. And in no. general, in the entertainment business in general, we are finally seeing people start to fight for everything. The, the writers strike, everything like that. So in, it's going to leak into everywhere. And it, we're... I mean, Nasha is not the first to like speak up Very against true. things and stuff like that to get money. There's been many a girls behind the doors and behind the scenes yeah. that have started to say things, and finally, there has been some some changes being made because they recognize the power. They recognize the power. And without the dolls, you have no show. There without no show. the no girls, show. without the dolls, you nobody have no show. would be watching this show. I'm sorry, but it's true. Like it's true. So it's just a matter of like it's about damn time in a minute. <laughs> now, in a minute, before we in jump back into the show, we have Jimbo and Candy going into the top two with a song that's been produced by Leland. Now, you both um, are really great at writing your own lyrics. How would you feel if um, a track was written for you? Oh. <laughs> here you go. Here you go. Here you go. Here you go. Like Cardi B has her raps written, right? right. Wonderful. 
it, because it's drag race, you're like, mm, y'all can try to clown me on this motherfucker. You know what I mean? Like, huh? Mm -hmm. It's giving fashion, you know, type <laughs> of tea. You know what I mean? Uh, you know, very that. Denali, how would you feel, Diva? Yeah, I think if you if you're comfortable with it, you've done it a few times, and you enjoy it, and it's easier for you to express yourself through your own like lyrical means. I, I feel like you should be given that option to do so. If not, like, yeah, it's more easy to like just rely on because Leland is incredible, and a lot of the Boy, producers, the, he's so good, and behind a lot of more pop music that's actually Choice in the okay, mainstream, yeah, than just Drag Race stuff. Like, truly, he's behind a lot of stuff. So I wouldn't mind it, but I would also enjoy collaborating with it, I suppose. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If I had given the chance to be like, can we do this together? That'd be fierce. Because this is the thing. I'm nervous. Like, are you going to write Jimbo a bitch track? Right. Can you well, imagine him going, I'm that bitch. I mean, we'll talk about the... Well, yeah, no, but I'll tell you how they did it. The, the way they did it this time was they had you turn in music that's very represent representative of your drag and the type of things that you perform to. So for example, Jessica, uh, because they didn't know what was gonna happen, uh, <laughs> in terms of Jessica, you know, staying or leaving, they had Jessica actually turn in music. So like, she turned in some Gloria Trevi, some Jennifer Lopez, things that have like a Latin flavor that's like, this is my kind of music. And then, uh, like, um, Jimbo turned in, like, Milkshake. Um, so, like, things like that. And Titties. she's like, this is, like, my style. And then based on the music that they turned in, that's how they wrote they, the music, lyrics, uh, melodies, all those kind of things. That's how they come up with uh, for this. But it's so funny because I do have some tea that I'll share later. I mean, I mean, it is obvious when you do see there's a big difference yeah. in the, the songs. I mean, look at the season... 15 finale. Yeah, can we talk about that? Because, uh, <laughs> Miss, who, who's the, I don't want to say she's the. Thank you! <laughs> the fact she, that you knew that. She, I went like this and you saw that said titties and you knew who I was talking about. Thank you. The, <laughs> the titties. Baby, when her track was con, the choreography was con, I felt like the dancers looked like they popped out of the TV. It was just extra production with hers. When I saw my child, I go, oh, you shaded the black girl. But you know, whatever. <laughs> That's my child, I'm defensive. But, I mean, regardless, I mean, what's the one that everyone still remembers from it? Not just G because- G-O-D-E-D-S-S. -E -S. Bitch, they called goddess. Goddess. They got it. It's goddess. It's everything. Can y'all ca carry song. me out, please? Yeah. <laughs> It and it so was, you know what I'm saying? And knowing Sasha, it was so Sasha. It's so Sasha. Oh my God, it's so Sasha. It sounded like she had input into it. If anybody's seen any of her continental Absolutely. performances, Very true. it gave a continental performance from way back in the day. So, well, yeah. Is true when they dragged her in? With, I am the drama. Uh huh, uh huh. <laughs> like, there was some obvious, like, collaboration there. Oh, oh, totally, totally. And I mean, wouldn't you want it that way, though, too? Oh, like, yeah. you're like, I do this a lot. We're going to have to incorporate this. Yeah. Somehow, and especially with the hair, with Sasha's hair, it was like she at knew. one point or another, you're you're pulling on this hair. Like I, I can see that totally happen. But all right, on that note, let's go ahead and go right back to the show and see what's going on. Okay, all cute right. little rehearsal. Yeah, what, how are we feeling about the way that they're receiving the choreography? Do we think they're slaying it? Do you think they're catering simpler choreography to Jimbo? What are our thoughts? No, if anything, it looked like Candy had the simple choreography. That whole step, ta, ta, and ah, uh, ah, uh, ah. Uh. You just did it, so you know that, okay. Hopefully it's right. Denali, you said you got to work with Miguel on your season, right? I sure did, sorry, I forgot I had a hat upstairs. Oh, yes. <laughs> sorry, this is, my, this is my snow bunny runway. Um, what, what was the question? Uh, Miguel seemed tame. How are they for you? Um, yeah, it's like cheerleading. It's like, you know, one, two, one, two step. It's whatever. But, like, I just love these, like, f like filler kind of, like, moments, moments in these episodes where it's like, oh, God, I'm really struggling with this choreography. I don't know if I'm going to get it in time, guys. Jimbo all of a sudden can dance, and it's just like, okay. <laughs> do whatever you want. I'll do your little dance. Nacious, um, while you grab a sip, um, you were there. Do you think uh, Jimbo's choreo was harder or Candy's? No, uh, it, Candy's was harder, definitely mm -hmm. for sure. With Jimbo, it was the teaching method 
that made it work for her. Um, and uh, kudos to uh, the core guy, Miguel, right? Miguel. Yeah, Miguel. Uh, kudos to Miguel for really picking up on how uh, to teach Jimbo because it was like, wash your hair and twist. And so she's memorizing these things yeah. and associating the choreography with that. So I have to wash my hair, then I rub my belly, then I throw it back. <laughs> Got it. That's how, because if you're like one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, yeah. she's she not a dancer. Yeah. You're not going to get that. But her, uh, she was she was getting it because of the way she was taught. So kudos to him for teaching it uh, to her that way. And kudos for her for learning it. She was she was actually really learning it. Yeah, uh, Miguel's amazing. I don't you know. should have just been like, why don't you just do the like Shirley Temple tap dance <laughs> thing and just be like. <laughs> no, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know if you can reveal, but why are y'all sitting there? Yeah, I was going to ask I, that too. I, uh, well, we will see. Okay, oh. see, yeah. <laughs> uh, but I also think it's like a, a tactic to make these holes even more nervous. Because, oh, yeah, just you know, you charge. have just ten girls sitting there watching you, and they're all talking shit. And I, I'm just thinking, like, bitch, we're not up there, so shut the fuck up. <laughs> it's a gag that they were like, we're going to keep you all in the hotels this whole time. The whole time. The well, you know, whole time. Well, we're excited. You know, we're getting a check, and we get yeah, more, true. we're getting more camera time. And, they, and do they have Netflix now? They didn't when we did. Okay, so I'll tell you guys a cool Netflix Still. story. So we had Netflix. We had we, the apps. We had a few of them. Netflix, Hulu. What, but whatever you logged into that day, like, that's what you're getting. You don't get anything else. And there's a code. The remote has this, like, code, like, four, two, three, da, whatever, to access the, the apps. Um, <laughs> who figured it out? So... Candy Muse. Oh, uh, here we go. Was standing next to the girl doing the, the the thing, the remote thing, right? And she's like, "Come here, bitch! I got the fucking code. I gotta give you the code so you can watch the other stuff. So you can watch the porn, the YouTube. The you can watch anything, right, girl? And then this I don't remember because if I did, you know, I would tell you. But somebody tricked and was like. And Candy had the codes. <laughs> um, and she's oh. cheating because she's using it for comedy. Yo and she's conozco. getting shit off the internet. And blah, blah, blah. And they Yo fucking changed conozco. the code on all of us. Oh. So then we were back to just one app. And then it was like, they had to do the code. And they're like hiding the remote now. <laughs> it was so shitty. But it was, it was funny fucking Candy. And the thing is, it's not even like a regular keypad. It's like a circle. Looks like a clock that has, and I don't know how she fucking figured it out. She's like, oh, I got it, girl. It's just, yeah, it's cr insane. Fucking candy. She I'm, would figure that shit out. I, I bet it was Alexis or Heidi that told on her. That's what I'm Ooh. just going to guess. One of them, too. That just, that oh just, my seems God. Like wait, and, and <laughs> Heidi, Heidi, don't come for me. I think it is Heidi, actually. <laughs> I think it was. I think it, I think it was Heidi. <laughs> Heidi, don't come for me. Just correct me. If I was wrong, be like, hey, it wasn't me. But I think it was you, Heidi. <laughs> <laughs> we'll look into that for you. <laughs> um, okay, um, so, really quick. Oh, another, another little bit of tea. I love this. So, I love this if anyone questions, I, I told Candy I was going to tell you guys this. She's like, are you really? I'm like, yeah, bitch, I'm going to tell them. And she's like, all right, fine. She, didn't, she doesn't mind. But one of the factors of her picking Jimbo, I know she says they're best friends and all of that and blah, 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 which is true. But in her mind, she's like, I'm going to have to do a final number against Jessica. The chances Why? of Jessica beating me in a final number were high. are way higher than Jimbo beating me in a final number. And that was the deciding factor. Like, it, because it, it's, a, it's a production number. Remember, we didn't know they were getting a production number. But by this time, the top three, they have prepared for that final production. So they know that they're getting this last production number. So Candy's like, do I want to do a production number against Jessica? Or do I want to do a production number against Jimbo? That makes sense. What would you guys have done? I mean, that makes sense, but Ooh. you know, you knowing Drag Race, they can do whatever they want by the end. 
You know, they could be like, yeah, it was all about this production number, but also your body of work <laughs> over the whole thing. And also, here's a wheel we're going to spin, and then nothing matters. <laughs> yeah. So like, I don't know. true. You know what I'm saying? So it's so true. You can try and predict and try and be the you know puppet master of this game, but they'll throw whatever. They'll girl, throw a gimmick. I just, I just told Mo yeah. upstairs, right? What did I tell you? I said, girl, if they would have said Jimbo... She would have picked Jimbo's lipstick. Surprise! There's a top three! Right, yeah. right, right. And it would have been all three of them. I mean, lips. look at it with our season. They saved Candy when she was eliminated. I was so pissed. I was like, are you serious? Okay, great. There's only one more top in the, in the spot in the top four after this. Like, that's what I was thinking in my head. So if she'd have done that, and she could have easily just done what she'd done to Candy and been like, I like Jimbo too much. We're keeping her. You know? I don't know. I think Candy I has that's her voice. <laughs> <laughs> Work. Hey, my girl. She has something on Rue. She 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 knows the show. Ooh, ooh. Candy. She's like, let me laugh at Rue's jokes. Let me cry at the interviews. Let me start a fight. I'm in the top two. She knows what she's doing. I think it's very smart. Um, someone who tried to do it but was a little less graceful was Willem. They were trying to pull all the stunts, but I think Candy knows what production is There production's will never doing. be another, though. No, there would never be another Willem, ever. ever. But do remind me, Candy after we that. watch it, about how good Candy is. She For is sure. So I don't want to reveal it now, because I want you guys to see more it. More tea. But there's more tea after this, so let's she go right so. back to the show. She moves. Yes. Uh, I Oh, my live. God. Maybe it's the it, most funny thing in the world. <laughs> it was giving, you know what it was giving? It was giving, what? like, hey, Rue. <laughs> Give us some of your moves. Like, what do you do? Well, I do this little back step like this. Like, okay, we can put that. What else do you do? A body I roll? How, I know how to do a body roll. A like body that. roll. Okay, we can work with that. Little back remember, remember when Regina George was in that, like, body cast thing? Yeah. <laughs> is, that what you're, is that what she was giving? No, I didn't say that. Why would you say that? <laughs> we love you, RuPaul. Honestly, what? that's one of my favorite songs, though. It, it's one of your that favorite song songs. Slaps. Actually, yeah, that song and the song that they use for this runway is my favorite, too. That's Produced a good by one Skeletal too. Keys. This new guy that she's working with, he's amazing. Oh. Yeah, this last uh, album was, yeah. like, hot. Real hot. Yeah, the runway song is, like, kind of reggaeton-y. Like, I don't know. It was kind of, like, I don't know. Yeah, it's fierce. Yeah. Okay, so we got the moment where y'all were all chit-chatting before the runway. Was there any standout moments there, Nasha, that y'all had as a cast? Or was it just, like, talking shit before the runway? No, I was just talking shit about the runway. But um, I know production hates when I do this. But, but we love it. But you guys love it, I'll tell you. Um, when that moment that uh, we did, that we all got together and hold, held hands, we did that, like, three times. <laughs> Why? <laughs> How genuine. Uh... I know. Because there were like too many chefs in the kitchen. It was like, yeah, let's all do this. And they're like, okay, stop. Do that again. Oh, yeah, and everybody would. And okay, no. Kahana, lead this. And everyone go in there. And then we did it like that. Because it was like just too many people trying to like push and shove and do it. Um, That's so sweet. But, but yeah, I, nothing. I mean, what, what you saw was pretty accurate. I can't remember any other conversations that went on. That okay. Were, yeah. Gee. Mo Denali, we like to ask the girls if y'all ever go back for an All Stars, would you prefer? I would never. <laughs> if you were to send Lux to an All Stars, um, would you prefer the elimination? <laughs> she met him. That was good. Make would you prefer the elimination style or the All Winners? Keep them to the all end. All Winners. Okay. <laughs> you want to showcase everything you got. I mean, oh, I want to send a bitch home. Oh. Period. Period. <laughs> Fuck up if you want to. <laughs> It's, yeah, I think that I think that they're trying to figure out what everybody wants because there is half the audience that just wants to see the drag and the camaraderie and the expensive whatever, all of this stuff. And then there, there's the other half of the audience that wants it to be Bad Girls Club. And they're like, yes. I want a physical yeah. fight. Can you imagine? <laughs> I want, I I want mean, even Sign me up. I do season one. Sign <laughs> me up. I'm drag a bitch by a lace. <laughs> <laughs> Throw all of her clothes in the pool. Bitch, yeah. Bleach. <laughs> like the Claremont twins. Yes. It would be everything. Bleach. <laughs> bitch, bring me back. Drag race baggers, curves, all right. stars. Bitch, I'm here for it. So it's hard because, like, you know, you want to, like, as a contestant, it's fierce when you just get to, like, relax 
showcase all of your stuff. You know, like if you were doing a winter season, yeah. you're like, oh, girl, I can literally just like chill, show everything I have. They'll give but you then, some stars at the end. But then, you know, the contestants aren't taking a lot of risks. They're not as like, oh, my God, like I might get eliminated. So, you know, there's not as much cutthroatness. You know? I mean, I think that I, th- I, th- I actually think the opposite. I would take a risk knowing that I'm not going home Period. opposed to mm-hmm. taking it just to stay there because at this point I'm like, well, bitch, ain't nobody sending me home. So the original thing to do was this. I'm going to fucking do that. You know what I mean? But, th- you know, there's the whole going home thing. And I'll tell you this. For me, it's the fans. If the fans treated everyone exactly the same that's on the show, then I would say eliminate the girls, right? But you don't. Because the girls that go home first, you treat them like shit. You don't follow them on Instagram, you don't follow them on Twitter, and guess what it does? It affects their work, it affects their mental health, it has more effects than you think, and it does more bad than good. So for me, don't eliminate a hoe and let them thrive on this fucking show and give everyone the same opportunity. I agree. I think drag, it comes from this subversive, protesting, artistic place. And because of RuPaul's Drag Race, suddenly it has this umbrella of competition and everybody views it the same way when truly it's forgotten where it's come from. So truly just seeing it like as a showcase of like, look at this incredible art form, I think personally is a lot more interesting than still having to touch on the like whole reality television competition basis because the the fans then think, oh yeah, this is what drag is about. And they're gonna compare every single drag queen and they're gonna throw them under the bus. They're gonna throw them a bunch of hate. And in the real world, unfortunately, the placement of this show, which you can obviously see, doesn't have a lot of consistent judging merit to it. Correct. They actually still treat us and pay us based on our placement. Which is really annoying. Yeah, so I don't know. But we all do love reality TV, too. I don't no, know. absolutely, absolutely. It's fun. It's fucking, it gets messy, and it's, it's fun to watch. It, it definitely is fun to I watch. I miss the old seasons and like that, you know, when the drama was drawing. Yeah, yeah that was Season nice. two and three of Untucked. Here he is. Problematic. See, that was... You can only watch that with safe people in your house. Yes. You know, you yeah. can't invite somebody to go, we're going to watch Untucked. No, 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 no. <laughs> No, 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 no. You got to know. Okay, friend, never say this out loud. <laughs> never, okay? This is back in 2009. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you got to look around the room before yeah, you say yeah. it. <laughs> right. <laughs> but also, even if, even if no one's going home, drag, I feel like we naturally are competitive. We're so true. on a show, Down. you're like, bitch, I want to serve. Yeah. I want. You know what I mean? So naturally, yeah. you're, you're still going to have that edge. I think, I don't think you would lose that. You know what I mean? You have it in a drag show. You have the girl like, I'm closing the show out. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) Put me last. (laughs) You know how the girl, I put, you know how the girls are. (laughs) Why do you think I asked for this hat? (laughs) No, I'm just kidding. (laughs) But truly, no, it's like, I think, I think that they're listening though. I think things are yeah, I, yeah. changing. I, yeah. Things are I, changing. It's the contract. And I hope that they it's the contract. stay that way. Yeah, yeah. I'm just going to... Uh, we'll see. I'm just going to say, let's keep this shindig moving, Amal. Yeah. <laughs> okay, okay. Now, before we talk about these videos and these runways, let's give it up for Nasha Lopez one more yeah! time. Thank you. Stand up, stand up, Thank stand up, you. stand up. Take a bow. Take a Girl. Take a bow. Take your moment. Take your moment. I'm sorry. Thank you, you. You, you absolutely looked the best on oh, the runway. Thank that you. was the best. Oh, thank you. No, come on. Thank you. Thank you. Um, so how do we feel about this last runway? I thought everyone looked really good. Yes? Beautiful gowns. Beautiful gowns. Many beautiful <laughs> gowns. Many, many, many. Uh, let's just kick it off at the beginning. Monica Beverly Hills. Yeah, we'll go, we'll go through the whole list. Yeah, Monica Beverly Hills. Royal purple, excellence. Right. I mean, Gorgeous. Pur- purple, beautiful. Purple on a finale. Yeah, I mean, always different hair, good. but that's it. Yeah. Different hair. Agreed. Yeah. Gorgeous, though. And then uh, then it was me, but then it's Ka- we'll just skip over to Kasha. Kasha Davis. Okay. It looks good. But... You know when you go to Joanne's <laughs> and you see that upholstery and then she said, okay, because... The outside was cute. The inside was giving me a little hamburger, no shade. She's a comedy queen, so I guess that's what she was going for. It was cute. I love you, Kasha. 
I think <laughs> I think it was too similar to her reveal runway, which was also right. the black and white moment. Got it. What about Darian Lake? How do we feel about Darian Lake? I think there could have been a something else, another silhouette. I like her energy this season. Like she's like, you know, yeah. I am pussy. Right. I just wanted to see maybe a little skin, a little pussy, something. Yeah. I don't know, but it, it was cute. The hair was. Mm. Compared to the rest of her runways that have been presented on the Fame Games, this one was a bit underwhelming. I will Got say, because she has really been serving in the Fame she Games. Yeah. I will say, this one was just like, a, okay. That's all. And if I'm not mistaken, I think this was like uh, like a backup that she brought, maybe. I, 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 think, I don't think that it was like her Initial. actual, you know, uh, finale, you know. The first choice. Yeah, it yeah. And I think choice. she just decided to like wear it or something. I'm not sure. I know there's a story because we did talk about it, but I don't remember it perfectly. So that's why I'm like, we'll uh. get it. But, I um, can see that, yeah. Moving Heidi on. and Closet. Hers was lovely, my favorite of the season. <laughs> Listen. She read that because it's on the list, y'all. She on wasn't the being fucking shady. list. I wasn't being shady. As can, soon as I said it, I'm like, out. oh shit. You can see it on patreon.com. <laughs> right. Yeah, yes. right. right. Yeah. Well, somebody give me her Patreon, then she, she won't be mad at me. One? What's her Patreon? Yeah, Patreon? If someone could get it for me, she won't be mad at me. So get there me that go. Patreon info. It's I, what, does anybody have it? No? Sister. Means none of you tune in. You're right, shady as fuck. Right. <laughs> but Divas, um, what y'all think about James Mansfield? They yes. were next. That. Someone said that she looked amazing in Alexis Mateo's gown. Oh <laughs> I didn't say oh. that. I didn't say that. I said someone said that. But you know, you borrow your sister's but, shit. No, totally. Sometimes you just gotta borrow some shit. That's it, yeah. period. Especially when you're getting especially when it's like they give you the order and you're like, okay, I got this, I got this. and then you get towards the end, you're like Bitch, I don't have anything else in me. Bitch, you got something you can give me for this? Like, that. Yeah. I can totally see that I happening. I like the headpiece, but the gown just didn't say James or... You're s- yeah, ma- yeah. You said or James Mansfield. or Mansfield. Y'all are so Somebody dumb. Said- Y'all are so <laughs> dumb. You guys are shit. Yeah, yeah, but I don't know. The headpiece, cause considering the first one that she came yeah. in and was leaning this way, yeah. this one, she, you know, it was giving very Roxy Andrews feathers, like continental right. with a budget. But, <laughs> <laughs> you know, the last time she went, bitch, she said, I'm eating you hoes. But, but the gown just... I, I will say this, though. I do like that it didn't read James Mansfield, that it was a yeah. little bit more elevated, I think. Oh! No. <laughs> Wait. Reading Y'all rainbow. are taking it in a shape. Okay. That, is, Wait. that is just an Wait. honest Do you get what I... You, you get said, what I, I... It wasn't yes. a read. Yes. It wasn't... I swear it wasn't a read. We got you. That's not what I was trying to go... Like, these were... These were actual, like, probably... Good stones, right? Like, they're not... No! Wait! That was a read! The pressure cells. Precioso, not Wait, the china glaze. What, what I not meant. the china glaze. That's not not the I, china glaze. You know, I that's the glass so stone, but you the, the precioso. Yeah, 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 yeah. The yeah. preciosos. You guys know what I mean. <laughs> it well, didn't gaze James at all. It no, no, no. Really seri- no, but seriously, she looked expensive. She looked beautiful. I liked it. I really did. Speaking uh-huh. of expensive stones, oh, oh. Kahana was next. Kahana. Yes. Did we like Kahana? Oh. In, in Joshua Naponte designs, I could clock it from afar. Yes, that was Joshua. <laughs> yes. It that was, was amazing. So, listen, every single little mirror and that when she mm. opened up the that coat. The up was very, yeah. very, very bad. Mm. Yeah, yeah, no, it Something was. Something at the bottom for me. I just, yeah. I don't know. Just at the very bottom of her dress. I don't know, it the just, floating or just, I don't know. You know what it, I think what it was is because it, it like she needed maybe a higher heel. Because Something. Because the flower was sitting and because it was sitting, it was doing this. Yeah. Like, to the guy, like it was yeah. bu- buckling. It yeah. was buckling yeah. because it wasn't uh, laying all the way down to the bottom. Like she needed so, a, yeah. her, so the, a higher like heel. Like a higher so, heel. But it was gorgeous. But it was, th- and that's just us nitpicking, talking shit because... That bitch looked sick. We would say that to your face, though. It, it was, yeah, yeah, yeah. It was like, so much to look at. No, it was I told so her. Visually no, stimulating, you know. Yeah. yeah. Okay. The so the video we, she dropped too was oh, cute. Oh, that was with beautiful. It. Very cute. Lala Ri. Yeah. Loved beautiful. It. Beautiful. Lala Ri looked beautiful. I would change one thing. Speak the hair. The hair. The hair. Say it. We yeah. we needed balance. The bottom is really big. I we do need agree. big, tall, I high hair to balance I this out agree. back here. I agree. Was the hair done right? Yes. Absolutely. It was gorgeous. It was clean, but not for this guy. I do agree. Yeah, yeah. I would, I would I have agree. just changed that. But I everything else is beautiful. Agree. Yeah. Then we have Alexis Michelle. Yeah. Alexis. The gown was cunt. Yes. It was. It. 
Something and from here, here just threw I'll me I'll tell you what it is. Off. The color of the hair. Yeah. It didn't read Auburn because it was against the red, so it read just orange. It read... It should have... Jinx Monsoon. That's it, what I got. Uh, yeah, no shade, but... And not even on a good day. No. Like, no, shade. Guys. Shade. <laughs> Y'all Chicago guys. girls fight out You here. guys keep misconstruing what I'm trying to say. Nisha, no, you just Nisha, keep saying it. you naturally read, and you should just accept that. <laughs> what I'm saying no, if it was, I swear, if it was black hair, that red would yeah. have just popped. It would have been so... Yeah. Sp- I do agree, because right? her, her crease, makeup, and the hair, just everything just kind of blends. So then you, all you saw was yeah. white lid, black eyeshadow, and that was it, and a big red lip. Yeah, it was, right. yeah. And that red gown in person, you can see how expensive it, and how listen, well God. made it was. It Alexis, was stunning. Alexis looks right. It like, does, right. she always she spends looks money. really correct. She does. She spends money. She knows her proportions. New York girls really know their their corset and their padding and their proportions and their tailoring. Some of them. The ones who've been on Drag Race. Right, 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 right. right. <laughs> but yeah, she's always she always looks correct. Yeah. Jessica Wilde. <laughs> Listen, we were backstage Gorgeous. and she just kept saying, I feel so beautiful in this. <laughs> it, was, it was so adorable. She just felt so beautiful because it's out of her comfort zone. She's more of like a leotard, something fierce with big shoulders and a small little waist. So for her to be in a gown with the hair down like that, she felt so beautiful and she looked so beautiful. I loved it. What did you ladies think? It was gorgeous. Gorgeous. Yeah, it was simple and clean and it didn't need too much, you know. It was like where Kahana's was like busy, 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 amazing. It was just really precise, clean, gorgeous, put together. The way she walked in it, she was like, I'm real. Like, I'm real. Like, I'm in a real beauty pageant right now. Yes. Especially when she touched her hands when she got to the edge of the stage. I mean, she was in it. Then we have our our top two left. We have Jimbo, who came out first. Are we not going to talk about Nisa Lopez, though? I mean, we kind of... She said I had her moment. We could talk about it if you want. I I don't mind. I mean, it was (laughs) amazing. Thank you. Thank you. So I'll give you a little backstory on that gown. I only wore it one time. I I didn't get it made for this. It's my step-down gown from Miss Continental. Oh. I, if you go back to uh, me crowning Brooklyn Heights, you'll see me wearing that gown. Uh, I only wore it once. It was hanging in the closet. I called Joshuan and I said, can we either add like a big bustle or like a coat, something that'll just kind of highlight the shape to this. Let's see. He said, why don't we do something very monochromatic? like?" pinks i can see some blues so he got this fabric and then i'm like why don't we do it with everything then i'll do like pink hair and do pink makeup and so yeah that's how we came up with that look so yeah, beautiful right? thank you i yeah. love the, 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 the almost like cracks and it looks like a cracked vase kind uh-huh. of thing which is also very current and now where there's that like idea of like mesh or kind of cracked i don't know it's so beautiful and then just that oh my god the volume in it truly it was incredible Hunt. Get over Nisa Lopez. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you, guys. Hunt, 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 okay, hunt. so what up? What? How do we feel about Jimbo? Oh, girl, I'm Jimbo. Scared. Okay. It was cut. It was good. Denali and I said it just wasn't giving finale. It did. It was given. I'm a former, and I'm about to like do a number before like we crown the bitch who's about to win this current page. I, I agree. It's giving. I've already won. I'm not spending that much more money. <laughs> and I don't. I've already her. won this. Yeah. So. And if you think about it, it's kind of outside the box for her because it was like a simple silhouette, beautiful pattern. Even the makeup was like super, you know, it wasn't clownish. No. The hair was, yeah, I, thought, no I thought it was The good. hair color, yes. The styling, I did not. The what? Styling? The you styling, didn't like the styling of it. I feel like it had been something a little bit more something else instead of this stereotypical like, Drag horn hair, like yeah. just right. something. She could have the dress felt young, so I felt the hair could have been like something Y two K S. Completely agree. Just some, even in those same colors, but I agree. I think the hair gave like Instagram hair. That, yeah, you know, like she was like, "Oh, this one will go. Send it to me." But yeah, but I also Very. understand when you get to the end and you're just like, "Shit, Bitch, I've already like, shown Which everything." Right. Over, you're yeah, like, yeah. "This one." I'll, do, I'll wear the Pikachu hair with my gown or whatever. Yeah, like it's fine. <laughs> but like, like, "Bitch, I want to go home." Yeah, exactly. <laughs> it was fine. And she then, just had such amazing like runways in general that like again we're comparing it to like everything she wore. It was great, but like yeah, I don't know. Okay, 
Okay, and then Candy. Oh, girl. What did y'all think of her? Did you get a Josephine Baker mixed with Betty Boop Tees? Be nice. No. No? What did you get? I was getting Be Tweety nice. Bird. I got, t- somebody said Big Bird over there. Somebody said Tweety over here. Basically anything yellow. You guys are so shady. It looked like but- a tearaway. You're it looked for like the, the way this big section was open right here and the volume that was on her waist, it looked like it was supposed to go around town town. Yeah. You know, you know how you, when you do a feather skirt, it should have so many feathers that you don't know where one ends and where Roxy it begins. Roxy Andrews, once again, and the problem is you can count each roll of feathers going that you say one, two, three, four, five. There should have been like 25 of them, and you would never know where that skirt Very ended true. and where it began. I think that was the, the problem. And then it started too high, right? It was way. Yes, it did. I think Lala's. Uh, silhouette on like candy would have right. looked great. Totally right. And then yeah. you could have bunched up all the feathers so you All of the and that. then boom. That would have been kind. That was I yeah. still think the hair yeah. was too flat because then it just she just felt squished. She does love like a baby doll silhouette that starts like right underneath like the breast line. Um, Isn't that the Empire just, way? Yeah, yeah. It just kind of looked unfinished is all. It yeah. did. No shade. And you know what? This is like First of all, everyone looked amazing. Yes, yes. But if we sit here and say everyone looked amazing, we don't have a show. So we're just nitpicking, going through whatever. But sisters, you all look beautiful. Debatable. I don't want to hear shit from any of you. Debatable. (laughs) They'll get in their feelings and stuff. But everyone was so, 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 so. She said, Heidi, you you look look amazing. amazing. (laughs) We love you, sister. Okay, Divas, now that we've had time to hear the tracks and watch them perform it, do you think they had any input? And what were your thoughts on both of their tracks? Oh, Mo, Mo, what did you think of those performances? Trash. I didn't. I'm sorry. When I think of, like, them having a solo talent, I think of Kim Chi, Bob, and Naomi. I yes. think of that. That was like, ah, you know what I mean? Those this felt is, catered to I them. remembered yeah. that I was, like, born. Born. I'm I born. Like, I remember when was, I was born. What? She could have said, I'm a clown. That, 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 I'm a yeah. clown. Zuh, 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 I'm a clown. Candies, I just wanted, like, an alto. Just a big titty black one. Yeah! Some kind of growl in the voice. It was like Samantha. It just didn't match, but I yeah. Re- I remember when Willow uh, was talking about like when she did the I Hate People number. She was like, everything is going very fast at that last minute, and they're trying to just write a song for you. They, they catch on to like one thing that you might have said at the very beginning of the season, and they're like, this is catered to your whole personality. <laughs> you know, I guess there's one time when she was like, I hate people. So they're like, we're going to make a song about hating people. Yeah. And like... I don't know if it like fully encompasses like your whole personality or drag journey. So just take that into consideration because like that's kind of what it was giving, where it was just like they said something and then they the ran. The choreography with it. was cute. Yeah, I guess. So yeah, Candy, that that Candy's final move, girl. Was she. Cute. <laughs> Nature, <laughs> real quick, at yeah. the end, y'all are all in white. Jimbo's in white. Did Candy not have something white, or was that a creative choice? No, to no, do that, the they stood in their original outfits. Okay, from okay, their. Okay their pieces from their, their dancing, their production numbers. Yes, yes, yes. That's what uh, Jimbo wore, and that's what Candy wore. It just so happened that Jimbo's was white. Okay, yeah, work. that's what I was wondering. Yeah, yeah. Um, so speaking of choreography... Yeah, did you guys have fun with that? And the pro- oh, my God, it was so stupid. Um, I would have been, like, wasted. It something. was so stupid. And then I tried to steal that robe, and they're like, we're missing one. And they're like... But they also wrote everything down. Which one was which? Like, Nisha, where's your robe? I'm like, fuck. <laughs> That's good so, fabric, okay? Yeah, yeah good it's fabric. cute fabric. It's real cute fabric. I would have did some shit with that. And I then told everyone I stole it from there. But uh, <laughs> So I tried to steal it, but I couldn't uh, get it. Um, <laughs> Wait, did you steal any of the... Does, uh, what's her name? Uh, Queen Fierce Jewels. Does she make jewelry for y'all? Do yeah. y'all get to she, steal jewelry? No, like she didn't make any like jewelry for us. This season? Like, there was oh, no, okay. no, yeah, she didn't make anything this season. Um... But speaking of the choreography, so they made them do this number a lot. Candy was doing it over and over and over again, right? My personal opinion, they wanted her to mess up. I feel like they just, I just feel like she was doing it well all the time, right? Like she was just serving it every single time. And then they're like, okay, let's have fun with it now. 
Candy's not stupid. And she knows how to play this game. And she's like, the fuck am I doing? Have fun with it. I'm going to keep doing the same shit I've been doing. So she does. But then she has like a little slip and she sprains her ankle. Like she feels pain in her ankle. But she rides through it. She's good. And then they're in the confessional. And they're like, hey, Candy, tell us about that. You kind of slipped and sprained your ankle. She's like, what are you talking about? Ah! And they're like, you, when, when you... You were My saying your queen. ankle was hurting. You had sprained your ankle a little bit. You're like, I don't that's know what Rose, you're talking about. not me. I didn't, I didn't sprain my ankle. I didn't hurt myself. I don't know what you're talking about. That's my girl. This is how well she knows how to play the game. Gaslight the it producers. Like, yes. You yes. are yes. not. It was like, you are not going to get me. She's like, I, I don't know what you're talking about. At that point, they couldn't even use it. E even if they had a good fucking you clip know, of it. Yeah, yeah, a clip of it. They, they wouldn't be able to. She's like... I don't know what you're talking about. And I'm like, you better fucking believe it. That, that's, that's how candy works, Atta bitch. Girl. Yes, yes, yes. So right now we just saw them perform the two final numbers. I, watching them both, I prefer candies. You, oh, yeah. Do both of you agree? Absolutely. Yeah, that ending was kind. Let's ask the audience. All right, uh, we'll do this. Jimbo? <laughs> candy? Okay, so it's safe to say that out of those two numbers, Candy had the stronger one, yeah? All right, so let's go back to the show and see what happens. So, how did you guys feel about the little recap? You've seen the whole thing, and do you feel like there's a clear leader of the two before going into this lip sync? Girl. And if so, who was that? Jimbo. Jimbo? Uh, Jambu. Jambu. Yeah. Uh, Jean Jambalaya. Yeah, so you guys think Jimbo, yeah? I mean, yeah. I mean, yeah, with four wins, absolutely. All right, so I have a little bit of tea. Please. We love when you spill. So right now they're about to do a lip sync, right? Yes. And we had the song. Oh, my God, we, I know this story. We, we, we had the song already for the lip sync, so we know which one, you know, you had all the songs, whatever. We Tell know them which, what it was we, gonna be. We, uh -huh, we, so we oh, knew okay. which song it was gonna be, whatever, and they've been preparing with this song, and all of a sudden, this producer, her name is Mandy. Mandy! Hey, girl! The hey girl. Hi, Mandy. producer! I love you! And Executive! Um, she comes up to Jimbo and Candy and says, hey, ladies, we're gonna change the final song. It's gonna be Milkshake. Milkshake. By Khalees. Do you remember the story I told you earlier? Who turned in Milkshake as a song that represents their drag? Basically, titties. So, Candy, she saw the music that Jimbo had turned in and that she turned in J uh, Milkshake as one of her songs. So, Candy says, she has something in her hand, she throws it down, she gets, Call my mother. Call my mother right now. Screaming at the top of her lungs to call my her queen. mom. She was going home. Fuck the show. Fuck everyone. You want, you want to crown Jimbo? Then you fucking crown Jimbo. But you ain't going to have a finale. Fuck you. And da da da. She goes off on everyone. And they're like, no, 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 no. She's like, call my mother now. You know what? Better yet, give my fucking phone. Give my phone. Give my phone. Give, yeah. give me my phone. Give me my phone. Give me my phone. We were all just like, what the fuck just happened? And Candy's like, then she explains to me the whole thing. They, that she were, they were trying to change the final song, and the song they were changing to was a song that Jimbo had turned in. So she's just like, no, you're not going to do that. You, if, if that's what the Everyone's case, face then right. you're not going to have a finale. And Jimbo was like, I, I mean, not Jimbo. Uh, um, Candy was like, I'm out. I'm gone. Jimbo's like, <laughs> what's going on? Like... <laughs> Oh wow! <laughs> and then, then you have you have candy you have candy over here. Esta se está haciendo la pendeja. She know what the fuck is going on. <laughs> she, anyone that speaks Spanish knows exactly what I said. But she, she was like, "This bitch acting real stupid. She know what the fuck is going on." It was, but she said it to me in Spanish. Um, <laughs> How long did that go so on before they're like, "All right, we're oh, keeping it"? Two seconds. I mean, it was just as soon as candy popped off. You have to understand. She's saying she's gonna leave. She, you are, you're no longer gonna have a final episode. 
You've already sent Jessica home. You've recorded the final production. It's not like you can say, all right, well, Jessica, step in, and we'll have you do the... No, everything's done. At this point right now, you have no choice but to leave the song. Mandy comes back. She said, she said oh, I jumped the gun. I made a mistake. I'm sorry. I don't know. And came up with this excuse that she made a mistake or something, that that's not what they were trying to do, blah, 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 blah. But... <laughs> Girl. Girl, they tried to pull the stunt on Candy, and Candy, the producer, said, no, it ain't happening. Not Period. today. Not today. And it, and it didn't happen. It went back to the original song. So kudos to Candy for not letting anybody yes. fuck with her. I'm telling you guys, you don't know what these girls go through competing. Can you imagine what that does to you? Compete? You're about to do a lip sync, and they pull that stunt on you? How, how, do you, how would you handle that, Mo? How would you handle that? The same way. <laughs> I told RuPaul I was ready to fight him that when she pulled that bullshit with me and Latrice, yeah. I was ready, but I saw the security guard. Let's say, let me rethink things. <laughs> so that's a big man. <laughs> but no, I think it's fair. Like, look, you're not about to play with me. And I know how this works. So if I leave, fuck your episode. Good night. It's just like, at least try and make it look like it's fair. You know what I'm saying? After all of the work and money that is put into these seasons, you're gonna play in our face like that. And, and that's not the first time that she's done something like that. I mean, you could go back to Jinx and Detox if you really wanna talk about, you know, like, about songs that are designated for certain lip syncs and people, you know, it's just like, it's obvious. But yeah, it's just disrespectful. You know, and and unnecessary is what I think it is. It's unnecessary. Either let everyone compete on a even and equal playing field, or don't send anyone home on this. And mind you, when I say no one should go home, original season RuPaul's Drag Race, no, leave that shit exactly the way it is. You're getting to know these girls. You you let leave that alone. I I love RuPaul's Drag Race, the original season, but your All Star season, I feel like. These girls have established themselves. They've either dug themselves out of a hole or created a, a name for them. And then you put them on this, and then it just tears that all down. You know what I mean? So that's why I think it should change. Maybe it will. Maybe it won't. Continue. Who knows? <laughs> maybe it won't. Just, just if the girls continue to speak up. Um, but it's yeah. truly, I'm so proud to hear stories like this of the girls speaking up because... We are the ones that make the show, so we should be the ones making decisions about the show, period. And, and you know, like, at the end of the day, like, it's just really nice, and it makes it better for us as an industry when we're hearing these things happening because it's just protection of us and our security in general. And, I don't know, Candy has taught me so much throughout my friendship with her to stand up for yourself, to fight for yourself. There were so many moments I look back at my season and I go, shit, I really should have fought for myself more here. I should have said something. I should have done something. And she was just like always, always, always doing that. So regardless of like whatever the outcome of everything is, she's always going to be a winner in my space for doing that, for Absolutely. being that person, Absolutely. for us. Absolutely. Well no. put, well put. Now, um, mm. Mo, is there anything you would change? Denali said giving more power to the girls, let them have say so. Is there anything you could think of that you would change about the show, the judges, um, even production? Oh, no, I don't have anything to do with this foolishness. I have a working career and I'm fine. Thank you. Period. Yes. I love that. I, no, I love that. But! <laughs> um, I think uh, they should be paid more, okay? Period. I think the episode appearance fee should be a lot more. I think what they get now, I heard, allegedly, they give you a little, like, ooh, sponsorship to go to cover. I don't know if that's true. There's a stipend to go, yes. A stipend. It's surely not enough for what these designers, because as soon as you say, Maybe well, two looks. hey, I'm going to Bible college <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> for six weeks, or I'm going to, I told somebody, I'm going to a prison camp in Cambodia. <laughs> Can you make an outfit? They said, yeah, it'll be X price. And you're like, bitch, I don't even know right. if I'm making it past episode totally. two or oh, three. Yeah. And you, so I think it's just so much that goes into being a competitor and then the aftermath, it just needs to be more. I think what it is, is too, is the industry is established enough that girls realize that they don't particularly need 
to rush back into this very expensive thing that may or may not be a good payoff for them. Um, and a lot of people are starting to say no, I think, for the first time. And that's when they were like, okay, I think something maybe needs to change. Yeah. yeah. Anyways. Yeah, no, there's definitely things that I feel like need I to change. I think there yeah. will be. I mean, there, aren't they filming the next season of All Stars right now? Allegedly, uh, yes. Allegedly. Allegedly. Well, according to my friend who's there and ain't picking up my phone calls, so... No. <laughs> They could be in Jamaica. I don't know. You know. Yes. What? Uh, huh? What? Who? I think they might have I don't know what you're well, talking about. Well, speaking of all stars, we're about to crown our next one. Let's get into this lip sync between Candy and Jimbo. Who do you think it is? <laughs> I love a segue. Work. Give it up for Jimbo. 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 Yes. Congratulations. To Jimbo, to Candy Muse, being a lovely first alternate, and give it up for our fame game winner, La La Rie, as well as the other eight divas on the season. This Absolutely. was sick, name bitch. Was, Great it, job, Nasha. Thank you. Give it up for Nasha Lopez, y'all. Thanks, guys. So, really quick, we're uh, we're gonna get into Untucked because apparently there is an Untucked. Um, so we're gonna watch whatever fucking bullshit they made us do for a little bit. Um, so we'll watch that really quick um, and do Q and A in between the commercials. Um, however, we're gonna say bye to the front bar. Bye front bar, front bye. bar. If anyone back in front wants to come back here, you're more than welcome. And if anyone wants to enjoy music and drinks in the front, you're more than welcome because here we'll do Q and A and untuck. So uh, yeah. So again, congrats. Um, we had to do ten different crownings for Fame Game. Lit <laughs> Oh, okay, yeah, because yes. y'all all could have won. We had to crown each one of us had to do that shit. So by the time it got down to like the third or fourth one, you're like, oh, girl, yay, girl, work. Did they like, yay, like y'all take to your Lala. We're on. like, yay, Lala, work, you got it. <laughs> it got all the way down to Jessica. We're like, okay, fuck her. Like, it, was like, it was just like we were over it by, by that time. Do you remember what you said when you won with the scepter and crown? Oh, my God, yeah. Did I tell you this already? You haven't, Why no. you asked me? No, you haven't. Say? Okay, so <laughs> we did this. And I had told him, I said, I had said that this was going to be a popularity contest. When I, I was in the room with four producers and I said, you know, Heidi has 600,000 followers. This was when she was still in the competition. I said, Heidi has 600,000 followers on Insta Instagram alone. I'm at 100 something. Do you think that I have a fair chance at winning the fame game against that many followers? And they're like, yeah. I'm like, you're full of shit. Like, no, it's, it's, it's not. Um, wait, why was I telling you this? The crown and scepter speech or whatever oh, you oh, said. Oh, yeah. So I'm like, there's no way that I'm going to win this, right? So when they crown me, girl, I'm like, yay, I'm not going to win this, but I'll pretend like I'm going to. And I'm just like walking with the scepter, like with the stupid ass little like walk. And RuPaul's like, hey. It was so awkward. I wanted it. I just wanted it to be over. You're like, yeah. It was so funny. Um, who had a cute one? Um, I think uh, somebody said, "You love me. You really, Alexis. really love me." Somebody said that. For sure, Alexis. Probably that was a cute one. Um, uh, Jessica's was cute, and we all thought Jessica was gonna win because she lasted the yeah. the longest. So we're like, Jessica's gonna win this. Um, but yeah, we did it 10 fucking times. Yeah. Nice. Well, it's almost done. We just got to get through Untucked, Diva. Untucked, and then it's a whole new cast, and we're all forgotten. So please. <laughs> <laughs> I'm kidding, guys. It was, it was a joke. <laughs> let's, go back to the, uh, let's go back to the show. We'll watch Untucked, and then we'll do Q&A. So get yes. your questions ready for everyone. All right, Mikey, let's do Untucked. All right. right. Let's do uh, some Q&A, shall we? Yes, yes, yes. Mo will be back in a little bit. They had to go to the bathroom and Mo fart, so just hold your questions for them. But if you have any questions for Denali or Nasha, just Mo think of the fart. context. Don't make it too shady. I'm going to start here, and then I'm going to make my way here, all right? They had, nope, no question. I lied. I'm starting One here. shade. Be shady. All right. Right here. What is your name, beautiful, and who's our question for? My name's Colleen. Um, I, I have a quick statement and then a question. Um, the statement is, the more 
you queens and all of us humans set our expectations with our boundaries, the more those we deal with will expect our boundaries. So that's my statement. Keep doing Thank you. it. Thank you. My question is relates to what you said earlier about do many in the audience prefer an all winners format or an elimination format? I'm curious to what this audience um, so if you wanted to do I a vote, too. Should yeah. we do a cheering thing. Question. Yeah, let's do. It. We could do a cheering thing. Audience, what do you guys prefer? Do you prefer? And we're not talking about the original season. Original season, we will not touch. It works. It's beautiful. It creates stars. It brings stars. Create all of that. So we'll leave that alone. We're talking about all stars. Do we like a winners format? Yeah. Or do we like an elimination format? It sounds even. Oh, so even. those that clap for the elimination, so fuck my drag then, right? <laughs> <laughs> I'm kidding, I'm kidding. <laughs> Next question right over here. Um, I'm going to come through this way. Let's try it. <laughs> yeah, it seems to be pretty split. I yeah. Think. No, I, I feel like the, uh, the winners is more popular yeah. than the other. I think just in general, I think everyone's ready for a, a change. A change. And, yeah. I yeah. Think, that and is a, a it, good it, idea. it seems more of a celebration for me, a celebration exactly. of drag, opposed yeah. to a. Because there's just too much like going on behind the scenes for a very inconsistent sort of judging. Yeah. I think everyone's just getting tired and frustrated yeah. of that. They just want to see the drag. Totally. All right, go ahead. You have another question. Next one, right over here. What is our name and who's our question for? Hi, my name is Francisco. I'm from Argentina, so Latina. Hola, Francisco. Hola. Hola. Bienvenido a Chicago. I love that suit and that hat, like, amazing. Uh, I just wanted to know, what is it like to be with all that pressure and all that, like, the commitment to all the challenges and all the pressure, like, all, all the time, like, in a few weeks? How do you deal with that? Do you have, like, therapy? I, I, no? I mean, you, you guys laugh, but they do now offer therapy. It's called, they do. It's called Queen Care. Um, and it, it sucks that it took them so long to even offer it. They didn't start offering it until I think like season 9 or 10. What? Because they, on season 8, they did not offer Queen Care. I was on 8. Probably 9 because VH1 took over. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. could be. So, yeah. maybe 9 on is when they started to offer. I think uh, it started Queen. after 12, actually. After 12. Wow, yeah. look at that. Um, it, listen, it... it it was one of those things that it was great that they came to a realization that this does affect our mental health, uh, not only during, but after. Yeah. Um, the pressure of competing is, on All Stars, it's a little bit different because one, I'll just tell you from my experience, for me, I, had a, I, had, I felt like I had something to prove, right? I, had, I, I felt like I took all this time digging myself out of a hole and being called uh, you know, you've heard me say before, elimination, and no one would talk about me being miscontinental. No one would ever mention my accomplishments. Everything everyone talked about was that I went home first, and that was it. So going there, I had to say, okay, you have to prove, not only to yourself, but to everybody else, that you are talented, this doesn't define you, um, this doesn't define your journey. It doesn't define your success. That there's so much more to me than just this, right? So that was just a lot of pressure. Just too much. I think about it now, talking about it, and it was too much pressure. I was setting myself up for failure. It's what I was doing. Um, if I have the chance to do it all over again, it's super simple. Don't give a fuck and just have fun. Like, that's literally what I would have, how I would have changed it. Because to give yourself that much, uh, I set the bar, the expectation too high and it just really tarnished my, you know, experience. You know what I mean? Yeah. What about you, Denali? Yeah, I mean, the pressure is a lot when you're there and it's hard to stay really present. Um, it's exhausting and they do things to make you not present and to make mistakes and get what they need or whatever. But, um, yeah, I think just in general, the pressure that we are expected in the real world to is um, really difficult and really just trying to like maintain this like level of drag all the time and this 
I don't know, in this industry sometimes can be a lot, but at the end of the day, I, just a reminder of like where this all comes from and its roots always just keeps it going. You know, I, I think about the kid that just wanted to like do a queer art with their friends in Chicago and I, I think about that all the time and that keeps me going a lot of the time, so yeah. So we're gonna go hold that thought, whoever was next. We're gonna go right back to the untucked and then we'll come back to the next oh, question. yeah. I'll stay close. Let's get untucked. <laughs> All right, Nasha the Matchmaker Lopez. I see you, girl. <laughs> that was such a weird segue. I love it. The... It's giving when Valentina was like, does anyone want to talk about my eating disorder? Yeah. Remember that? <laughs> Just TV. Our next question is right back here, Divas. What's your name, Gorgeous, and what is our question? Oh, my goodness. My name is Michaela. I'm so happy to be here. Michaela, <laughs> welcome. Um, but I guess my question is... How do you feel about like, maybe the commodification of drag? We were talking about like $6,000 dresses, like wig, 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 like it's really expensive. And I don't know, how do you feel like the show has affected that trajectory of drag? Good question. <laughs> Mo, go ahead. I mean, it is a, a lot of money that you spend on a costume that you'll probably wear once or hope that you can wear it again on tour. But the reality that Drag Race now is truly like launching careers. So in the same way music or television Hollywood, like they want you to show up as the persona, the it, are you a star? What does a star look like? You should look like that in and out of drag, you know what I mean? So all of those things, you're like, this is an investment, but it's for my future. Now, what's the future when you talk about commodifying drag? I wanted to work on television. I didn't mind paying it. Somebody who wants to do the circuit or just do the other things, maybe it's not worth it for them. So, But I would just say it's launching careers. I mean, Bob was supposed to go on tour with Madonna. I have my own show on Amazon Music. Number one hit show. Thank you. We just filmed with Dolly Parton yesterday. It was so amazing. You know what I mean? But, you know, so, it, 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 like, season one to five, you know what I mean? Even up to eight. Season nine is when it really started. Season 10, <laughs> he got an Emmy. And then now you see the girls on doing their thing. So it's, it's really changing. So it's a lot. But you go, if I have the opportunity to be the superstar that I wanted to be before I hit the stage... Roscoe's, any whatever, then I'm gonna do that because now I have the opportunity. We're not just like, oh, you're the drag queen at the drag bar. Ho, ho, ho. No, like, bitch, I'm a superstar. Bad down. Very bad. I know, that's right. But it sucks. Too damn expensive. <laughs> our next question's right here. What is our name and what is our question? I'm gonna scan. Hi, my name is Kyle. First, I wanna say, Jews for Denali. Always. Always. Always for Denali. Um, and my Lachaim, question. I am, bitch. Well, I am. Jews. Um, <laughs> Jews. <laughs> Brucha Tadonai, bitch. Yeah. Whatever the rest of that is, yeah. Um, my question's for everybody. Uh, a lot of people have been complaining about the judges on the season and that the judging really isn't fair because they aren't um, drag queens. Uh, who is one person that you would want to see on the judges panel? Drag queen or non drag queen? Anybody? Preferably a drag queen? Because, like, drag? Great um, question. I think T.S. Madison should be a permanent judge. <laughs> she is. She is, though. She is. Oh, is she? She's a permanent, she's a permanent judge. She just rotates. Like, oh, but okay, she's, okay, okay. She's just like Ross and Carson, and now they've oh, added okay, T.S. Good. Yeah. I wasn't sure, but, like, uh, like T.S. Yeah. Madison for sure. I think getting more of the trans community in general and in the judging panel would be great because at the end of the day we wouldn't be able to have drag race without them a, a ballroom voice would be amazing um but uh yeah you know having a drag voice is difficult because i think what rupaul maybe okay. does or, or doesn't want is somebody that is in her same venue at that kind of level i suppose maybe um, so it's a little difficult, but um, I don't know. I'd love to see Na Naomi. Le oh, Laomi. 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 Oh my God, I'd be Laomi. so scared. Laomi. Oh, I'd be so scared. <laughs> see, I, I always think that judges, when they're guest judges especially, if you're having an 
some sort of SNL skit to have someone from SNL, that makes complete sense. Like, when you do stuff like that, if you're doing some kind of music challenge, let's have someone that has something to do with music. Like, yeah. stuff, I think that's a really cool way to uh, kind of navigate through picking your guest yeah. judges. As far as a permanent uh, judge, I don't know. I don't, I don't know anyone right now that yeah, I would I want know. to... I, I wouldn't either. because I feel like if you're going to judge me, here you go. I feel like there are some people that could have an honorary like voice. Like here you go. Um, maybe not. I'm not going to say her name because y'all might know her. So I'm going to just say it like she could come in and speak woo. But for there to be a permanent drag queen other than RuPaul, you better be like the baddest bitch ever. Yeah to say anything to me because if I get on the stage as a contestant and look better than you as a judge that happens on a few franchises. Um, Name the franchise. <laughs> baby, you see the judge, you be like, bitch, you look like a contestant. Your cut crease is wonky as hell. But okay, buddy, okay. Once again, I work for Jeff Bezos, so I give no fucks. <laughs> <laughs> Um, but yeah, um, I do think, I think, truthfully, I think Michelle, Carson, and Ross have been around drag long enough, even without the show. You know, Michelle was a fly girl. Michelle was involved, kitty cat, 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 cat. Uh, who's the skinny face one? The horse dude. Carson? Santino? Him. He's oh. been, you know, he's gay since <laughs> Coochie. He can say something about, you know, gay. Ross, gay since Coochie. You know what I mean? They, they know what to say. Bring back Santino Rice. Ooh. No, I'm pretty sure Santino is like cancel, an cancel. Okay, then who, who like was the white Republican? lady before Michelle? Merle. Oh, uh, Merle Ginsburg. What's her name? Merle. Merle. Bring back Merle. She was great. Merle. Have you guys yeah. seen that episode where they're like Merle and Michelle's like? What happened to Merle like Ginsburg? She was, like, yeah. real, she was like real upset about it. She's like, ew. We That's have funny. One more question before yeah. we get back into Untucked. Um, what is your name and what is our question? Yeah, uh, my name is Michael. Uh, <laughs> uh, my question is actually for Mo Hart. Um, Mo, who is your favorite performer who still performs at Missy B's <laughs> in Kansas in City? KC. That still performs? What's Taj your... Mustetson. Uh, Mr. Gay America, uh, Casey Sunshine, um, yes, yes. Widow Bondu, ah. um, Beans, I think that's his drag name, Beans, Peter, Lana, little baby Taylor Swift, Riri, XL, and Riri Small, Carmilla, Mulan, Kiana. Okay, yeah. now you're just making stuff up. <laughs> no, they're going to be in the comment section. They should give me a shout out. All right, should we go? We'll go back yeah. to Untuck now and wrap it up with Untuck. Stunning. Let's make some noise for All Stars 8, the entire Ooh. cast, yeah. for giving us such a great season. So great. Uh, Sean, are we done with QA? What's the dirt on that? Um, do we have, we have a couple more? Well, we have a couple more. Karen, you want to do this front row one really quick here? Right here. We'll do one, two, three. Okay. Yeah, go ahead. One. Right there. Pick one. Three. Okay, go ahead. Ask, ask. What is our name and what's our question? My name is Cameron. I'm from DC. Hi, and I see four beautiful queens of color in front of me. My question is specifically for Mo Hark, but I would love to hear your answers as well. Um, Mo, what is it? If I were to describe your drag in two words, it would be black excellence. Right? My, my question is. How did you navigate black excellence and a fandom that may not always be as receptive? That's a, that's a good one. That's a real um, one too, okay. I would say that there were other black excellent queens that went before me. Uh, there was the lovely Shea kool representing Chicago. There was Bibi Zaharbonet, there was Bob. Um, the other ones, Jada, they're the, the girls, right? But uh, for me, I learned my first year around that this paycheck is very fickle. And so if you want to keep making this lovely paycheck, you got to know how to network and navigate these spaces. 
And so you just do what Jinx says, water off a duck's back, you know. <laughs> Give me my fucking money, bitch. <laughs> you know what I mean? And you just go like, bitch, I'm going to show up and I'm going to make you hoes eat because that's who <laughs> I am. But yeah. That's it. Well put, well put. Um, where was our second question at? I didn't see. Hi, mm -hmm. would you stand up for me? What's your name and what is your question? Um, my name is Chelsea, and I, my question is for Denali, actually. Um, I remember all of the really amazing videos you made around your season, and especially the Drag Excellence one, and I was wondering if you had any ones coming out soon. Good Thank question. Um, yeah, I usually produce my videos during the, like, calmer seasons, so the summertime's a little harder because I'm traveling a lot. Um, I think I slow down with my travel in, like, October, so that's when I'll start to kind of, like, Oh, actually, wait. I think that there's one in September that I might be shooting. I'm probably going to take uh, two queens on the ice soon. Um, I'm doing my little ice skating series. And I'm trying to do a lot with those, but it's a lot of work. Um, but I think there's two queens that I might be taking on the ice there soon. So, yeah, that should be coming up soon. Ow, ow, ow. Right over here, what is our name, beautiful, and what is our question? Hey, my name's Peggy. My question's for all the queens. Peggy! Hi. Hi. Um, so you all were mentioning how some Chicago queens have advocated for pay for the queens um, and compensation that is accurate or more equitable. And as we know, Chicago is a union town. I'm a proud union member. And I was curious if there's been any talk of drag queens Girl. unionizing, specifically alums this from the show. This conversation yes. has been going on for I, a long That's wild time. you said that. I have talked about this several, several times. Um, it's something that will happen. Uh, I've, I consider drag queens to be some of the hardest working people in entertainment, period. Um, there are queens that make everything from what they wear to the hair on their head. We do our own makeup. All these things are all things that we produce ourselves, whether that's going and getting it off a rack or sewing it ourselves um, or paying someone to make it. Um, so I just think that the pay and the respect and uh, all those things should reflect the work um, that we put in because not every place is like Roscoe's. Roscoe's is a place that appreciates this Facts. talent, pays the girls a Facts. generous amount, and we have the best energy in this audience anywhere. So, I mean, it, it's definitely something that's, it, it's, it's gonna happen, for sure. It is, it is gonna happen. One thing that I do think is um, a difficult thing about that conversation, though, is because a lot of queens have practiced this for a while, sometimes, um, oh, how do I say this right? Um, I feel like queens accept less than they should, and that makes it a little bit more difficult to make that argument that we all deserve uh, the same kind of treatment, if that makes sense, you know? Does that make sense? Like, if, Totally, yes. Yeah, it kind of tarnishes that, like, fight for equality when one girl goes, well, oh, I'll just do it for, like, pennies, or I don't mind, and then everyone's like, oh, well, and, then, well you know what I'm saying? Or and this is like a that. hypothetical number, because this is really what happens. It's a hypothetical number. They say, you know, I say, I'll do this for $100, and then the place says, well, I don't have $100. And then the girl behind me overheard and said, well, I'll do it for 65. And then the club says, well, I'm gonna hire her. But what this queen doesn't know is that she's doing a disservice not only to herself, but her to entire community industry. as artists. Yeah. So we need to stick together, which is why a union needs to happen. Because then equal pay across for everybody, not just Rue girls. And then our final question is right over here. Stand up for me. What's your name and what is our question? Thank you. So Jose, uh, Dominicano. So, thank you, thank Hola. You. Dominicano. So, uh, you can definitely all answer, but Denali, I believe you are the only queen who has been titled the lip sync assassin of a season, if I'm, if I'm not mistaken. So if you were all oh, yeah. to lip sync in the all star format, what queen would you be like, fuck, I have to lip sync against this bitch and turn it out? Kennedy Davenport. Kennedy Davenport, yes. period. That's true. You, you'd pull Kennedy. the thing back down and be oh, like, no, bitch. It says Kennedy, and I throw it all away. 
That's T. I was just in Vegas and I saw her at the Vegas live show. Oh my God. Like, she's still just splitting, bucking, giving 125% at all times. Like 60 she's, years old. Uh huh. <laughs> she's not kidding. <laughs> she, she's stop. truly like the definition of lip sync assassin. I, <laughs> <laughs> But current girls like season or like uh, like Anitra, I would be very scared to look oh, against. Yeah. Laganja, um, Colby, Sasha. Oh my God, are you kidding me? Yeah, like there's a there's a lot, but yeah. Oh stop! It all depends on the song choice because you could even see Kennedy also goes up, you know, and then they give her a, a country song or something like that, and she's like, oh well, shit, you know. A lot Fuck of it depends it. on song choice, That's you know. True. Ladies and gentlemen, please make some noise for our guests this evening. Give it up for Mohart. And keep it going for Denali. And stick around. Both of the divas, along with Nation and myself, will be performing at 11. So, yes. Really quick, I want to say thank you guys all for tuning in to an amazing season. We got through it. Thank you so much for everyone at YouTube for tuning in every single week. We read all the comments. Thank you so much. Keep it coming. We are not sure which season we're coming back, right? We're not sure which one we're coming back to, but we'll see you soon. Um, yeah, because Roscoe's does it, is the best place, the only place. They really are. And we do everything drag race is only here at Roscoe's. We also want to give a special shout out to all of our uh, interpreters, but tonight, Olivia as our ASL interpreter. Give it up for them. Let's also keep that energy going for Sean, Brendan, Gabo, Mikey, who produced the show with music and dealing with diva attitude like caramels. And <laughs> let's give it up for all our bartenders yes. that work so hard. Thank you guys so much for an amazing season. Give it up for Batty Davis. We love you. We miss we you so much. You, Batty. And one last time, Miss Caramel DeVille. Give it up for yeah. Caramel. Thank you so much, Roscoe. Thank you, Nation. It's been a pleasure getting to do this with you and just see how powerful you are on TV and here, bitch. You run shit. Please keep it going for the main host here every Friday, Nasha Lopez, y'all. It's been an absolute pleasure. Thank you, guys. Have a good night. Goodbye, YouTube. Subscribe if you haven't already done so. Thank you so much.